clean water is vital to all living things on Earth. Not so long ago, people were fine drinking from the fountains and taps in houses, schools, and parks. By the panic of Y2K, people started buying it for emergency purposes. Now, it seems we can't live without it. The amount of people that use plastic water bottles has increased in 88%. Are you one of these people? You may wonder what exactly has led to this so-called water bottle craze. Well, the story goes two ways, good and bad. Good, because people are starting to make healthier choices by drinking water instead of sugary pop drinks. In fact, because of the healthy choices more and more people were making, sugary pop and soda sales drastically declined. Huge companies like Coke or Pepsi had to respond by something called manufactured demand. This is a marketing method which makes people believe they need to spend money on something they don't need or already have. In this case, they acted by making ad campaigns to lead us to believe that, all of a sudden, bottled water is better for you and tastes better than tap water? In reality, bottled water doesn't go through nearly the same amount of testing as tap water, so it is not better for you. Next, blind taste tests prove that people consistently choose tap water over bottled, so it does not taste better, in fact it tastes worse. So what is the point of bottled water when better and cleaner alternatives can be found in your very own kitchen tap? It's awful that people are charging you for the same water that's available for free. So why do people do it? Convenience plays a big role in why people buy bottled water. Men and women have very busy lifestyles. Knowing how good water is for your health, carrying a bottle with you just makes sense. Unfortunately, there is a huge cost of the convenience of plastic water bottles on the environment. Let's face it, plastic water bottles don't only affect the environment after the water is consumed, but also before. It's obvious that before the bottles can be sold, they have to be made first. Companies take an enormous amount of oil from the ground to produce the bottles in the first place. This creates hazardous waste. Actually, last year, the amount of oil used to create all the bottles in the U.S. alone could have fueled one million cars. Okay, so recycling the bottles is supposed to help a bit, right? Well, the truth is, only 20% of the bottles are actually being recycled. The rest are being downcycled. As you know, the regular recycling program was and is meant to take a product and turn it into something useful. Downcycling takes that same product, turns it into a lower quality product that will just be disposed of anyways. So when you feel good about throwing your bottles in the blue bin, think again. On top of that, all the waste around the world gets shipped to and pollutes the environment of third world countries. Take India, for example. They have this recycling in their very own backyards. I cringe at the fact that our growing amount of garbage is becoming someone else's problem. Sadly, there is more. The other non-recycled bottles are being thrown into the garbage where they will sit in landfill sites for thousands of years to come. Some are even being burned and are releasing harmful toxins in the air. God gave us this world. Who are we to ruin the most precious gift you can give? Let's just take a moment and think. Are these plastic environmental destroyers still worth it? Believe it or not, there is a solution to this growing problem. We as a community need to come together to create an anti-water bottle plan to personally commit not to buy or drink bottled water. I'm sure we can handle it. I mean, all it is is a simple trip to the store to buy a refillable canteen for as low as $10. Let's compare. One plastic water bottle costs about $1.50. Usually a case of 24 is about $4. If I were to drink two bottles a day for a month, that would cost roughly $10. This doesn't sound like such a bad deal until you compare it to a refillable water bottle. That same $10 can buy a reusable canteen that will last you for five years, let alone months. The good news is that plastic water bottle sales are decreasing where refillable water bottle sales are increasing. Also, restaurants are proudly serving tap water. The final step is encouraging others to join you in your anti-water bottle plan. In the book of Genesis, God tells us to be stewards of the earth. Let's accept the challenge. We can do it. No, she can't be left-handed. No one is a lefty in this family. Switch your hand before it's too late. This is what my parents heard day in and day out. When my family realized that I preferred to use my left hand, to feed myself and write my name. So many people tried to get my parents to switch me to my right as I was growing up.
but to their despair, I still am a true lefty. I'm sure all of you know at least one person who is left-handed. Although we are the minority, with only 15% of the population being left-handed, this number is on the rise as society is becoming more understanding of left-handed people since they used to think that they were abnormal and different. Lefties even have a day for themselves, Left-Handers Day on August 13th to celebrate their uniqueness. Left-handed people do look at and see things differently than right-handed people, since the right side of left-handed people's brains is a domineering side. When the right side of your brain is dominant, you typically think more creatively and abstract, while the left side makes you think more logical. This is why many people say that lefties are very creative. Being left-handed is definitely not a walk in the park, since the world around us is geared and caters towards right-handed individuals. A task as simple as using scissors can be challenging to someone who is left-handed. You just try holding scissors with your left hand. It just feels uncomfortable. And lefties are expected to cut a straight line with them. Why is computer mouse always connected to the right side of the computer? Why is a doorknob on the wrong side of the door? These are questions that lefties ask every day. There are many challenges that a left-handed individual has to face on a day-to-day -day basis. Studies show that most left-handed people are male and very successful. Did you know that the last three presidents of the United States were left-handed? Yes. Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and George Bush are all left-handed. Many people say that lefties are intelligent people. And according to statistics, this fact is true. There are more left-handed people with IQs over 140 than right-handed people. Which is the genius bracket? Left-handed people can deal with new information and can process it very quickly. Ever since I was little, I've heard, you're left-handed? How do you eat? How do you write? How do you function? When I was just starting school, I would always wonder why I wrote different hand than the rest of my friends. But as I grew up, I realized that I was normal. What a relief that was. As I've gotten older, I've experienced the ups and downs of being left-handed. I do get to be unique, but I also have to face some minor challenges each and every day. But challenges and all, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now to all the righties out there, I hope I've given you a better understanding of what it's like to be a lefty. To all the lefties out there, well, I guess all you can imagine is a life of a righty.